What's up, Simonix? Welcome back to a new tutorial. And today we're getting back into OCR. So this stands for Optical Character Recognition, and we will use the great Tesseract JS um, plugin. Actually, Tesseract is a library on its own, but Tesseract JS can be used with JavaScript. So we will use it in our Ionic app using Capacitor, using the camera to capture an image of text, and then hopefully getting the message. So. Um, we did a tutorial on this a few years ago using version 1, now there is version 2. It is slightly different and it works great. Um, there's actually also on the GitHub page a demo of using a video. Uh, I looked it up. It's basically capturing an image of the canvas every uh, few seconds. So not really any magic. So we will just do the basic version, which involves uh, capturing an image and then hopefully getting the text from the image. So I already started a blank new Ionic application using Capacitor as always. And then we can go ahead and using the latest version of Tesseract.js with at next. Also, since we're using Capacitor and I also wanted to test this a bit on the browser, uh, you can install the Ionic PWA elements. Um, if you just want to run it on a device, that's fine as well. Um, but that will help you to run it on the browser. Now, two little steps. So for the uh, Ionic uh, Progressive Web App elements, you need to go into your main TS file and add this little snippet which uh, defines this custom element you see coming up in the browser when you open the camera. So main TS right here. Second thing is go into your TS config app JSON and actually add types um, node. So this was in the beginning mandatory for me. Uh, then I removed it and checked again and it worked again, but I think this is really necessary for the plugin to work. Uh, we don't need that file anymore. And also, um, initially I added a little, can I do it? I initially added this to my TS config. I'm not sure if it's required. I um, just wanted to show it in here since I used it in the beginning and don't know which of these two settings actually fixed it. So just in case that would go to your TS config. Now we can go into our application. Um, the first thing we need to do with the latest Tesseract um, plugin version, whatever you want to call it, is to define a worker. And this is already pretty interesting since um, you can have, um, yeah, we need the import as well. You can actually have multiple workers in your application, which means you could handle different jobs uh, of character recognition at the same time. Now, if you um, just want to, um, let's do the import first, uh, from Tesseract.js, the create worker. Uh, do we need anything else? No, not really. That's just a little typing here. Um, you can also create multiple workers, as I said, but we will focus on one worker for a simple reason. Um, if you just want to uh, like recognize one image that the user is capturing within your application, you don't really need multiple workers. That isn't going to uh, improve your performance. Every worker is just handling one recognition at a time. So uh, you can't throw like four workers on one recognition. Therefore, let's just do the one worker. And actually um, it is recommended to load this pretty early in your application. So I will uh, put this right into my constructor. If that's like the first page of your application, I would be um, at least careful if you increase the or decrease the performance of your application. So um, this stuff we do inside load worker actually takes a few seconds and we can add a little lock for this. Um, so um, this will actually give us a nice little progress in the end as well. And we can close this. So for now, let's just put a console lock in here with a progress. And then we have created our worker. Now, once we get the worker, we also need to tell the worker uh, which language to use. And again, if you have multiple languages, you might need a little switch and initialize the worker at a later point. If you know that you're just capturing English, French, Spanish, whatever it might be, then simply put it like this, load the worker. 
um, load the language. Uh, we will talk about self-hosting files in the end as well and initialize it with your language. So this is now for English. Since this actually takes a few seconds, let's put a lock in here as well. Uh, we might need some brackets. Uh, we will also keep track of the worker already. Uh, we could actually use a behavior subject, but <laughs> let's just use a Boolean today. We really don't need uh, uh, interesting. Um, now we're ready. Because, uh, let's see, the application uh, already served in here. Uh, and we see quite a few locks. And you see, we're still not finished. We're now finished. That took like perhaps five seconds. Um, so really calculate this and load the worker at an early point. Because if you start to load the worker uh, only when you want to start the recognition, you will add these five seconds to the recognition as well, uh, which isn't really a great UI. Now, uh, let's use a dummy image, which I actually copied from the examples on GitHub. And we will also have a little variable for the OCR result. And finally for, <coughs> sorry, the capture progress. Let's set this to zero in the beginning. We already see there's the progress. Um, so we can use this inside the logger, but there's a little problem. Right now the status is whatever and we don't really want that progress. The only progress we actually want is if the status is recognizing text. So that's the status you will see when we recognize an image. So let's put into our homepage uh, another function to recognize an image and we will just use our dummy image for now. So if you have anything else, you can also upload it or use it, but it should be text because we're trying uh, character recognition, right? So. Uh, the result is now simply this dot worker recognize and we pass in our image which can be a URL base 64 string um, could be a lot of different things and once we get back the result let's also lock it since the result is actually an interesting object but for the real text result there's only one thing interesting and that's inside data and the text so now we just need a little button and let's also use an image. So we actually know what we're um, going through and then ion button. Uh, let's make this one full and we can actually disable this button. So it's disabled when the worker is not yet ready because in that case you shouldn't, um, shouldn't call the OCR functionality. So recognize image. And then let's give this a try. Okay, there's a little typo and we should add a click event, which is recognize image. Great. So we see this dummy image and we also see that the button is still disabled while our worker is setting up. Now we can call it and we see status recognizing text. We actually don't put the progress anywhere, so um, that should be done within our view as well. And this actually takes a few seconds. It's, well, it's not too long, but perhaps it's challenging. And I also noticed on a device, it's actually a bit faster. Now, the result looks like this, especially data.text is interesting since it's exactly the information we see in here. There's a lot more information in this. Uh, we're not going into every detail. Uh, we see that we got basically the confidence for every second, every line. Um, at some point we also find, I think in symbols, uh, yeah, basically for every object that uh, the OCR tool detected, we find a lot of information where in the image it is. So you could have a list, click on it and mark where in the image uh, the character was recognized. That's a really powerful result. But if you just wanna have the results, it's simply inside text. So let's also display the text. Uh, I will bring in a little card. So the card will also be displayed when the worker is ready and when our capture progress is bigger than zero. 
So let's try this out one more time, recognize image. And once we move into uh, progress, we see capture progress going up again on the browser. It seems to me a bit slow. Um, not sure why most of the time the browser is actually faster than a device, but there we go. Uh, the full text that we see in this image was, uh, I think completely recognized, but of course, this is just a static image. We also want to capture our own image. So let's put in another button to call capture image. And for capture image, guess what? We will use um, the capacitor plugin to capture an image, which always looks like this. Mark the function as async if you're using a weight. And then we need a bunch of imports uh, for capacitor. So let's move up um, plugins so we can destructure the camera plugin from the object and these just uh, for a little uh, type safety. Um, we will use the data URL. Let's lock the image for testing. Uh, you could actually also use different formats, I think, but this one just worked uh, like it's the easiest way. It's base64. You can directly assign it to our image. Uh, I think we need to use not this one, but actually the data URL. Um, but we will see after recognizing it, it will be a base64 image. Now, last time I completely messed up my camera when using it on the browser. So I really want to do it this time on a device. There we go. Uh, let's try and capture an image. And I actually got this book here for testing. So let's try this one. Perfect. So we got the photo capture. Uh, all right, sorry, uh, I had to redeploy the application. So let's try again. I just use this book cover. Let's use this and let's call recognize image. So for smaller text, it's actually quite fast. Uh, and we see everything you need to know about starting building business from the world's most influential entrepreneurs. That's actually the text we wanted to scan. So it definitely works on my device. Uh, so hopefully it works on your device as well. Just a quick addition. Um, I had a few issues. So perhaps using a regular file instead of base 64 string is a better idea. And that's most of the time a better idea. I had crashes with other applications as well. So um, if you encounter any problems uh, with the memory, try to save the file first and then load it from your um, file system. Also, second edition, uh, if you call create worker, there's actually also the possibility, can we find this somewhere, um, to use a local file. It is also linked in my article. I can't find it right now. Um, basically, you can add a little snippet to your Angular JSON um, to copy files from the Tesseract, where is the package from the Tesseract, Tesseract. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so you can copy the worker min JS from the Tesseract JS and also the, uh, Tesseract core wasm JS file inside your Angular JSON. So it will be moved from node modules to your output folder. And then within create worker, uh, you can actually use a worker path and also, I don't know actually, actually what's the second name, but a message is you can use a self hosted file, uh, or file file hosted version of these files in your Ionic application or on your server. So the application isn't downloading these worker files all the time. Same for the language files. You can also host them uh, locally or on a server. Um, they are kind of big, so I wouldn't include them in your application, but if you don't want to download them from somewhere, uh, you can have them in your local um, environment in a better way. And actually, I guess, uh, faster for your application. If it's any way out for everyone on the world, uh, it won't make a huge difference. Perhaps you could use some CDN. Um, but I guess that would already be included with the general version. So this is improvement. Also, you can use multiple workers as said in the beginning, but that won't help if you just want to convert one image. 
I hope you enjoyed this uh, updated version about the OCR recognition or the optical character recognition using Ionic, using Angular, using uh, version 2, uh, kind of beta of the Tesseract JS plugin. If you got any questions about this, let me know as usually below and I hope you will build a great app with this feature. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the new tutorials, quick wins and other app development and web development videos on this channel. If you want to learn more about Ionic with in-depth courses, a community of like-minded developers so you can learn and build your app faster, you should definitely check out the Ionic Academy, which is my code school to help you with everything Ionic with a huge library of courses, material, and a supportive Slack channel so we can get your app out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and happy coding, Simon.